Welcome back to RGR. I am Ryan, and this is me going rogue on the NFL and the Kansas City Chiefs. And this is going to be one of the ones that slants more towards the NFL, although the Chiefs are definitely part of it. I had planned to do my Q&A. Thank you very much from Florida. I uh, met a bunch of you Chiefs fans while I was down there. Stood on the spot that Mahomes stood when he went to Disney uh, right after the Super Bowl. So that was kind of fun. And I uh, got to run in. Got a lot of comments on uh, my new hat. Thanks to my old man. Thanks, Bob. Um, anyway, I'll show you that in, in a different video. But what happened today, uh, and it's it's late on Thursday, um, when I got done with work, found out what had happened with the CBA vote. I was pretty surprised by that, actually. Didn't see that coming so quickly. Uh, and a lot of information came out of little bits and pieces here and there. Um, that I've heard people start commenting on. And we're going to go over a bunch of it today. We're going to start, um, and I wanted to throw this out and get this done because of what it all means and, and how big a deal it is. And we'll get, we'll get back to the Q&A starting back to normal on next Monday. Um, and I'll get back into some of the off-season things I'm going to do. I'm still going to do film reviews, uh, player reviews, um, but I'm going to do some mock drafts, going to get heavy into the draft stuff so that uh, you'll see some some more fans coming, maybe not necessarily cheese fans, but for those of you that aren't that are NFL, um, if you're not subbed, hit the sub button, hit that notification bell. So you see when something new comes out uh, and leave a comment below and let me know what you think of this. Um, and definitely leave a thumbs up if you like this particular video. Now, we all know that my internet connection is not the best for streaming, so I'm not going to leave myself on here that long. We're going to switch over here in a second to my desktop. So I can share my screen with you and we'll go over some of the information that did come out about what's going on with the CBA and the vote that happened today. And we'll just go over to that here now. And I'm going to pull up and basically this is the statement that the NFL made and it came out late for me anyway. Um, after I was, I was done with work was when I found this and let me go through this with you. Following more than 10 months of intensive and thorough negotiations, the NFL players and clubs have jointly developed a comprehensive set of new and revised terms that will transform the future of the game, provide for players, past, present, and future, both on and off the field, and ensure that the NFL's second century is even better and more exciting for the fans. The membership voted today to accept the negotiated terms on the principal elements of the new collective bargaining agreement. The Players Association would also need to vote to approve the same terms for there to be a new agreement. Since the clubs and players need to have a system in place to know the rules that they will operate under by next week, the membership also approved moving forward under the final year of the 2011 CBA if the players decide not to approve the negotiated terms. Out of respect for the process and for our partners in the NFLPA, we will have no further comment at this time. Now, I want to backtrack. That's that's the, the white and black lettering, but there's a couple of things in here that threw me off a little bit. So I want to point some of that out. The, the key thing here is that they they point out that the players and clubs have been negotiating. We've heard that there has been good progress. So that really does mean something for them. And I do feel like that's an important statement to make. It, it's not a little thing that they were able. Well, there we go. There's an interesting view. It's not a little thing that they were able to get along to get this done. It does take some doing, and so that is important. Um, and it does also uh, come down to me. It's very important that they they made sure to mention past, present, and future for the players. That means in terms of uh, uh, the retired players, what their pensions are going to be, what their um, some things that have been coming under fire over the last few years, and that's all very important as well. Uh, moving on here, the fact that they they've accepted as they've agreed in principle that that is the, the big talking points. They have the basics laid out and they've come to an agreement and they're going to send that to a vote for the NFLPA. Now, right now, as it's um, it's approaching 10 o'clock in the central time zone, I'm hearing that that vote's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, you may have seen that confirmed. I've actually heard from a couple of people that are pretty surprised by that, but they're looking to move forward. Um, also, we're seeing some player reaction because it, the NFLPA did put it out. We're going to go over that here in a second as well. Um, but so uh, an approval vote has to come. 
the one thing that I'm not sure of is why there's this artificial deadline. Uh, I'm not sure what that means because the, the league year doesn't start until March. Now, I, I know March isn't that far away. Um, maybe it's because they feel like the, in order to get it ratified, signed off on, maybe all the, the paperwork part of it takes more than a week and you have the combine coming next week. You know, maybe maybe that's part of the problem. I don't know. I don't know what that actually entails, but it seems like the NFLPA agrees that it needs to happen quickly. So they're taking it to a vote right away. So that, that kind of makes me feel like it's a little bit legitimate and that there isn't this artificial pressure that the NFL is trying to exert on the NFLPA uh, to get the players to sign off. When you get pressure in a negotiation like that, that usually means that somebody's got something in there that they really like, that they they want to push through and, and make the other voting party not really necessarily read it all the way through or, or try to slip something by them. So that always makes me a little bit nervous. I was a little bit disappointed to, to hear that language in there. But the NFLPA seems to be aware, and they seem to be moving on, and I think that's good for them. Now, here's another statement, and... There it is. I'm going to pull it up and try to make this look better for you guys by going back to not that, but this. And so um, here are the key things. And this is this is three pages here, if I have it all, all right. So we're going to go through a little bit, not to take forever for you guys, but I want you to know that it's coming. So here we go. Um, 47 of adjusted revenue in 2020, plus 100 million in new player costs above the current CBA. Okay. I don't know what those numbers are in existence. So clearly the NFLPA knows that and they communicate it to um, each team has a representative that will vote in general. And then it has to go to the whole body of the. But I understand uh, the NFLPA rules uh, mean that whatever these numbers are, they'll be communicated to the players. The players have a representative on each team. Those 32 representatives will vote. Two-thirds of them have to vote yes, that this is acceptable. They will, of course, talk to their teammates and whatnot in order to make their initial votes. If they get there, then 50%, 51%, I think is the actual term, um, of the players themselves have to vote yes as well. So it has to be uh, ratified so much, or it has to be voted for twice, once by the representatives in a two-third of the players in a 50% or 51% majority. That's my understanding. Uh, I don't know the bylaws of the NFLPA, but that's what I've read from two reputable sources. So I'm going to go with that for now. Um, and these numbers won't be really that dramatic for us because we don't know what they are, but they will be communicated to the players. So as we go through, a guaranteed 48% share of revenue in 2021. That means 2020 is still not under... It, it, there, it sounds like they're proceeding under the CBA for this ratified. But with the ability to increase it to 48%, 48.5% share through a media kicker, which applies in any season where the league actually plays 17 games. So right away, the big rumor that we're hearing is that 17 games is not only on the table, but it is written into the agreement. Uh, that's what the, the NFL P PA is sending out to its players, so they understand that. And that's a big chunk. Um, and I think they explain that here. The projected increase of roughly $5 billion to players of a 10-year deal. Now, divide $5 billion. That's, what, $500 million per season of those 10 years, right? To the players. That's a huge number. It's not, you know, I mean, that's five-team salary cap, basically. Is that? No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's three teams uh, or what will be the salary cap. Either way, it, that's a good chunk of money to spread around on what is a roster that I don't think is going to change in terms of its overall numbers. But we'll. Um, but again, the 17 games is in that. Now, you've, you're going to hear a lot of media types go crazy about the 17 games. You might have already heard one that we all respect, a guy that I think as far as, as media goes, he has one of the most informed, most knowledgeable voices out there and a guy that I respect quite a bit. He used to cover the Chiefs here in the local media, and you guys know him. I think he's dead wrong about this because a lot of his complaints are that it changes the record books. It changes how much they have to cover. I don't care about any of that. The media just have to adjust to it, including myself. The point is, as I understand, it, the proposal is 17 regular season games, but dropping a preseason. So now you're playing three preseason, 
17 regulars. Same as number of games. Now, the snaps obviously will count different because your starters are going to play in that 17th game, and they probably wouldn't have played in that fourth. Although, <clears throat> I don't think there were many players this year. I think it was Patrick. I think it was Jeff Fisher. Jeff Fisher, sorry. I, Eric, I apologize. <laughs> I think it was Eric Fisher, Patrick Mahomes, and I think there was like two other players that didn't play in the fourth game at all. And anytime you lace it up and you step on a football field, you have an injury risk. So for me, from where I stand, I don't see it as that different. And if you're going to play a 17th game and you're going to get paid for it, I think that's better than not getting paid or taking a chance at playing that fourth preseason game, playing five snaps and getting injured and costing yourself whatever that income turns out to be, not only that season, but in the next contract, et cetera, et cetera. So that's where I'm coming from there. Minimum salaries are going to go up, 100,000 increase to rookie minimums, 50 increase in 2021 and 45K each year after. Each year after. That's significant in my mind because that means that it's not just, hey, we're going to bump you now as we start the CBA. We're going to continue to bump it. And I think that's something that the NFLPA has probably pushed for quite a bit. Increase to the minimum salary benefit. Not sure what the benefit part means there. I'd have to look at the bylaw information. I don't have that in front of me. I want to do this tonight so we could go through this. Um, right to use the rookie distribution pool to provide additional payments to players at minimum salaries to keep minimum salaries in line with cap growth. So again, that's it's trying to adjust your your vet mins and your player mins, the guys, you know, the 45 to 53 guys on your roster uh, to help move the bottom line, the, the, the poor end of the professional football league, uh, which are the guys that have to scrap every dollar they make in what is by average a four-year career in order to try to springboard them into what comes after football. Uh, creation of a new four-year player benefit. Uh, that is, again, I think they're basing that on the average career, quote unquote, uh, <clears throat> and that can go up an additional 1.25. That seems pretty good as well. Bonus payment of 117th of paragraph five. Paragraph five is their base salary in the contract terms. That is the money that they call yearly salary. It doesn't have anything to do with signing bonus or roster bonus or workout bonus or any of that. That's why they're all called bonuses. Paragraph five is their base salary. And so basically what they're saying is you're going to get another game check. You're going to get the equivalent of another week's pay of whatever your existing contract is. And so it's it's not like they're adding it on there and they're not paying for it. <clears throat> it is in line with what they're making. I think that is, it goes on to say up to 250 of any player whose contract runs through a season with 17. Okay. So that is again, tied to the 17 game season. Additional cap room per club in 2021 of 17 games is implemented and the kicker does not reach. Now the kicker is what media deals that they'll sign. I believe the last one was structured so that there was a specific percentage that went to the NFLPA and to the players themselves. Um, and so that kicker would be part of this negotiation. I think that's what they're outlining. Again, this is just my take. I'm not a legal expert uh, and I'm not involved in these negotiations, obviously. So I'm just giving you my rundown. Um, whoop, didn't mean to scroll there, folks. Sorry. Additional cap room per the club. Oh, we talked about that. Performance-based pay increased to 8.5 in 2020 and 10 in 2021, the annual increases thereafter. Now, you always hear about that, where some somebody plays a lot of snaps. Uh, I think Ron, Duvernay Tardif got, I, I want to say it was 305,000 after the 2018 season, played a lot of snaps, played well, and, and he was one of the bigger in the league. And I believe that 8.5 million is based, uh, that's a team number, I understand correctly. I could be wrong, but I think that's what it is. Um, and so that uh, allows for some increases there. Uh, Another option to kind of enhance the way that they're already doing business. They're not throwing anything out uh, in terms of uh, the performance-based pay. Um, increase the minimum team cash spending to 90. Right now, it is at 89%. So that is forcing the owners to spend more money. Um, so out of a, what will be 188 or soon to be a $200 million cap, you're talking uh, an additional, quick math, $2 million. So that's that's two or three by then the increases will come along. Um, minimum salaries. Uh, it's two veteran salaries, vet min salaries. So th that's, that's something. 
Hundred K increases for original round tender. The, that's going to have to do with how you tag players uh, when they get to free agency in terms of the tenders. Raise the practice squad players to ten thousand per week, and total number of twelve players increasing to fourteen players with two unlimited accrued seasons. So they're going to pay the the lowest end. The practice squad guys are going to get a pay bump as well. And I think that's the NFLPA protecting its players. I think that's really great to see because those are the guys that go unsought off. Those are the guys who get injured and don't get anything out of their careers if they injure themselves on a practice squad. That's that's where you can really mess up your life by trying to be a professional player. So I'm really glad to see that. Guaranteed funding rule to increase by $15 million per club. Fifth-year options fully guaranteed for fourth and fifth years at the time the option is exercised. So that means that kicks in as soon as it's it's done. If you exercise it early, if you exercise it during the fourth year and that fourth year hasn't concluded, it, it becomes guaranteed. That's an important kicker as well because then you have those – um, you don't have those injury questions. You don't have anything that you could maybe step aside from. I think that locks in the players on that are going to get those fifth year options exercise. I think that locks them in a little bit better and gives them a little more security. Uh, I did it again. Sorry, you guys. From performance escalators for second round picks, super escalators for the rest. Okay. Gambling def- definitions that ensures money is included in players' definition of all revenue including portions of non-football activities. That's going to need a lot of clarification. I'm not going to go too deep in it now because it just doesn't mean anything at this point. We're going to have to see what all this revenue comes from new gambling rules across the country. This is going to be important. Hours in training camp, an introduction of a five-day acclimation period. I'm not sure what they're talking about. Acclimation to what? Um, Does that mean five days between reporting and being on the field does that mean five days between uh, reporting and and uh, doing your conditioning test I don't know what that means I will be very interested to see what that means but <clears throat> two and a half hour limit on padded and full speed practices not a big condition I think that's more just defining what is already the going practice in the NFL I know the chiefs work at a pretty brisk tempo across the league but I don't think their practices go more than roughly two hours. So I don't think that's anything to be concerned about there. Uh, limiting time at the, at the facility during a given work day. That comes to a dangerous conclusion for some guys that you've seen, like Alex Smith, like Drew Brees, like uh, Patrick Mahomes, uh, like a lot of guys who put in the extra time at the facility doing work. That could be tricky. Uh, you don't want to limit study time for your stars, right? But at the same time, you want to have some work-life balance, right? We all hear that in our own daily jobs. Uh, so that's that's going to be interesting. I, I'll like to see more information about that. Um, limit of 16 days in pads. I believe that that is a drop, but I can't be for certain. No more than three consecutive days out of for three out of five weeks. Okay, so that's going to impact camp a little bit. Um, Three-day weekend at the end of camp if 17 games is implemented. That's usually the practice for a lot of teams. I do believe it is for the Chiefs, definitely. So, um, again, a good practice, but I don't think that's that's earth-shattering. Two days off in the first week, one day off every seven thereafter. Okay. Um, that makes sense depending on scheduling as well. Limited four joint practices if three preseason games. Joint practices when the teams choose to practice together. I never think that that's very much of a good idea. That's what games are for. But if you're going to do that, you're only going to have four of those practices if they're only playing three preseason games. And I really like the concept of three preseason games. Three preseason games should have a couple of things. I'll echo them here at the end. Uh, Because we're going to get through this. I know you guys are getting tired of it. Mandated improvements to visiting team locker rooms. That's huge because there are a lot of dungeons in this league where the visiting team is in conditions that aren't so great for not only uh, recovery from injury, but just general health practice. Uh, You don't want to be in Oakland's visitor's locker room ever. Um, Hopefully the Darth Vader dome will be better than that. But um, Established standards for rehabilitation facilities, training rooms, equipment at each club. Uh, those are implemented on a, on a club-to-club basis at this point, so I think that will be interesting. 
active squad increased by one offensive lineman. So specifically, 45 active. It's going to become 46 if this is ratified. And one of those spots is specific to an offensive line. But it'll be interesting to see how they work those, those numbers. Development of improved safety metrics for the fields. I think that's key. We saw what happened in Mexico City. We've seen some things around the league. I mean, what used to be for years in Philadelphia, they're going to have to come up with some set play um, game time, go or no go based on field conditions. Um, benefits increases, um, pension increase of 10%, 401k matching, annuity increased. Um, I believe that's going to be the payout. I could be wrong. Um, I don't want to get too deep into some of these technical terms because I don't want to give anybody the wrong impression. I'm not an expert at this particular part of it, but um, life insurance, I think that goes a long way. Um, tuition reimbursement for active and former players. I think that's a big deal. That's not something that you hear about a lot, but I think that is a big deal. Help these guys, especially if you're the average NFL player and you're in and out in four years, help them move on to what they're doing. Maybe they graduated, maybe they didn't. Maybe maybe they want to go for a grad degree or maybe they want to do something else, but that's that's a big deal. Um, adding vision coverage to a healthcare plan. It's shocking to me that it's not there already. That gives you an idea of what some of the complaints that the, the Players Association had over the years. No vision coverage? Really? You're an elite person at your job as a player in the NFL and you can't get your eyes covered for contacts? That you probably have to have to have because you can't play in glasses anymore? I mean, not everybody's Eric Dickerson. You know, I mean, come on. Okay. Uh, anyway, injury protection, 100% of the salary. That's great. Um, termination pay. I'm not sure how that functions right now in the NFL, so I'm not going to comment on that. Practice squad players eligible for 5K tuition benefits a year. Hey, that's helpful too. Um, I, I understand that there has to be some something to differentiate you from a practice squad player from an active roster guy. Okay. But they're still helping you with your education and continuing it on your off time, and I think that's that's great and well-deserved. Uh, former players get retroactive increase to 550 per month for all vested players. I'm not sure what that is, if that's just a, a pension payout or, or what that is. Um, Expand the pension eligibility to all former players with three accredited seasons. That's a big deal. I don't know what that will do to the roles in terms of total involvement, but I think that's going to be a big deal. Um, I can't speak to HRA. Creation of new network of hospitals. Okay, that's that's specific into employee benefits, and we're, we're not going to go too much farther on that. Um, here's a couple of interesting ones. Overall reduction in on-field fines. Hopefully they get less ticky-tack. I think that's what they're going for. Reduction in club fines. The club wants that as well. Clear parameters of ownership and usage of player data from the sensors. That's the tags and the pads and all of that. Um, I think that is somewhat um, got a role in, in not HIPAA standards because it's not personal information, but it is um, tied to a person. So I, I think there are some question marks there. Implementation of a neutral decision maker for discipline cases. This is probably the big one. Um, and I hope I read that well. well these next two are big. Um, this is a third party. This is an arbitrator outside of the disciplinary track for the commissioner to get an unbiased representative to decide discipline cases. Um, now it doesn't say for, it does say for most, doesn't say all. So that means the commissioner will still have the power to do what he needs to do. But this is big in that establishing a third party gives the NFLPA some neutral ground that I think they've been looking for for years. And that partially comes into this next one, which are changes to the drug policy. And that is narrowing the testing window from four months down to two weeks at the start of training camp, which is kind of silly to even do that, in my opinion. If, if you need to be clean for two weeks at the start of training camp, what's the point of testing? That's my question. Um, and this is specific to THC, which I think more and more states are ratifying. I don't, I don't think it matters um, what the NFL feels. I think at this point, the medicinal value that, that players use uh, THC for and the fact that it's being legalized in states across the country, I think this is this is a step in the right direction, but I don't, I don't 
I think this is holding on for, for too long. I think it should just uh, be a substance that they don't test for any longer, to tell you the truth. Um, and that, and this is all, this is a very specific thing that players are, are wanting because a lot of them live in states where it's legal and it does have a medicinal value for them and for dealing with the rigors of being an NFL athlete. Uh, a couple other words, uh, workman's comp, uh, I'm sure is, is gotta be a big part of it. I don't know what that part is, uh, for the NFL PA and uh, being able to break out your pay instead of just game checks for those 17 weeks, spread it out, you know, and, and that's a nice option. I think we've all tried to use that before. So um, and I know you're tired of looking at my screen. It's been quite a while. Uh, I really didn't think it was going to take that long, but I just do want to get back to the big thing is 17 weeks, right? For me, I feel the only way it can happen is if you're reducing the preseason by a game. And I feel that's a good thing. And I do feel that while the injury risk is going to be more because it's going to be more staff, it's going to be live. I do feel like there's still somewhat of an injury risk anytime you take the field. So I'd rather them do away with the fourth preseason game. What that also means is I think you're going to see starters play. It's hard to say starters. Guys that are expected to start are going to play more in the second game but not as many snaps in the preseason overall. And I feel like that's more bang for their buck. So ask any competitor in any sport, honestly, in anything, anywhere, would you rather go down getting ready or would you rather have an issue or, or go down fighting? And so for me, it always comes back to that. If you're going to sustain an injury, I'd rather it be in the regular season during an actual contest that meant something. So, if you only have three games and you have to evaluate young players, that's what they always say the fourth preseason game is for. I think that's crazy. If you're going to do that, then you have to reduce the starters snaps. And I think that protects them a little bit more for if they're going to have an issue, it's going to be when it, it counts, when it's a regular season game. Um, it does mean that football is going to be sloppier for the first week or two every season, but if that's the way it goes, that's the way it goes. There's going to be a lot more detail coming out about this, um, and we'll go through it on and off. I'm going to do all kinds of free agent stuff, all kinds of league stuff this year. I don't want you guys to get bored. You cheese fans, this channel is still going to be about you. I have memberships coming. I'm trying to work on what the memberships will be in terms of what you get for them, but I'll tell you this. Um, there's going to be a lot of mock drafting going on. Some of that will be Group think where I'll do a live stream for the members and you guys will help me do the draft and we'll do it together and we'll have a, a good time with that. I'll do some content that will be, if you want to see me be more of a fan, if you want to hear my actual opinion on some things that is not a uh, language set for a public YouTube channel, you can do that as a member. So th those are some of the things that I'm coming to, but I um, just want to get this done for you guys today. Uh, I will I think the poll says you guys wanted a mock, so I'll try to have that early next week. We'll do the Q&A on Monday night. Have a great weekend. I'll probably put a bonus episode up on the, from the podcast over this weekend, so check that out. Appreciate you. If you're new, hit the sub, the notification bell, leave your comment below, and give me a thumbs up if you like this one. I appreciate your time, and I'll talk to you next time.